example. Number one, identify where the question mark is. Identify other lengths you see in the picture. And write an algebraic equation. Algebraic equation, we want to start with the question mark. And look at that in relation to the other things. So for example, if I start with the question mark, the most natural thing that I see to write is question mark minus 50 and a half equals 28 and an eighth. If I want to be more standard with my algebra, I'll call this a letter. We'll go H for the man's height. So his height minus this pink distance equals this blue distance, right? Yellow minus pink equals blue. That's an algebraic equation. A numerical expression, we're not allowed to use this equal sign. I'm going to have to think backwards a little bit. Although, truth be told, with this one, uh, maybe the algebra is the way thinking backwards, right? If I start with just the numbers, how can I use them to represent the question mark? That'll be 28 and 1 eighth plus 50 and a half. That's a numerical expression. Expression, because there's no equal sign. Now, this and this are both going to generate an answer for h. The connection between the numerical expression and the algebraic equation is, right, if I saw this on a test or something, I need to add 50 and a half to both sides to isolate my variable. And I would have 28 and an eighth plus 50 and a half. So they are connected. That's number one, algebraic equation. Number two, numerical expression. And number three, actually solve this. You can use a calculator of any sort. I would like the answer to stay in mixed number format if possible, uh, but if you need to convert to decimals because that's what your calculator does, you can do that. Technically when we add mixed numbers we add the whole to the whole, so 28 plus 50 is 78 and we add the part to the part 1 eighth plus 1 half 1 half is the same as 2 fourths 2 fourths is the same as 4 eighths so 1 eighth plus 4 eighths is 5 eighths 78 and 5 eighths that's my total height of the yellow line and I guess we should say inches so that we have the unit. A rougher example might look like this. I want to know what's the length of this yellow line. I have my length of the side of a hexagon, a length of the corner to corner in a hexagon. If it's a very difficult situation, I'm probably going to start by trying to figure out the numerical expression and then go to the algebraic. So this is what we've got. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We've got six short sections. So six red sections. Six times 1 and an eighth plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five longer sections, five of the blue ones. And all together, that will be the distance of the yellow line. So that is a numerical expression that represents the question mark. Algebraically, if I start with the yellow line, I'm going to need to... Let me, let me subtract out my, my blue numbers, my five blue pieces. 
and that will leave me with my six red sections. So I need to subtract and then divide. All right, let me see how I could write that. Uh, if I, oh, I'll just go underneath. Let me change the font first. Underneath, I want to divide by six. I'll draw a little line. So we're doing, make that line a little thicker. We're doing, again, distance minus five full hexes will give me just the partial hexes. And if I divide by six of those, I should get the length of the red piece. So equals one and one eighth. That'll be an algebraic expression. All right, complicated, tough to think through it. Full distance minus, basically this is full distance minus the gray pieces divided by six equals one of the one of the six white pieces, right? Essentially, that's what we're saying. If you're not sure if your algebraic expression works, you should get the same answer for both of them. So if I do the math here, six times one plus one, times two and one fourth equals 18. All right, interesting, whole number. Distance equals 18. And if I'm not sure, if I'm not sure if my algebraic expression was correct, I can test it with this. So if I do all of this math, 18 minus five times that, all in parentheses, 18 minus five times two and one fourth divided by, all of that divided by six equals 1.125. Ooh, you would have to, you would have to know how to convert your fractions of decimals to know if that's one eighth, but you could test it. Uh, one divided by eight is 0.125. All right, so we're all good. 18 solves both of these.